Friends, welcome to this act of worship on Sunday, the 30th of May, Trinity Sunday. Our call to worship. Where ocean meets shore, you are there. Where earth meets sky, you are there. Where day meets night, you are there. And so we worship you, wonderful Creator God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we worship you. And so we listen and join in with our first song, The Splendour of the King, How Great Is Our God.
let us pray. Timeless God, creator of the universe, you alone sustain the space our world inhabits. You are the mystery before time. You alone are worthy of the gladness and praise of our lives. You approach us in humility and weakness, willing to be misunderstood or ignored for the sake of love. You alone are worthy of the gladness and praise of our lives. We adore the mystery that combines the unspoken and the uttered, the eternal and the momentary, the universal and the particular. For through such paradox, we experience your holiness. Jesus, for us, the Christ, our companion, you are the unmasking of God, flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone. To you belongs all the gladness our hearts can muster. You laid aside your glory and became a servant, ready and willing to respond to God's call for a new world. You shared our life and in the end succumbed to the powerful in the name of love. To you belongs all the gladness our hearts can muster. Mysterious spirits, always brooding, always moving. You lead us in the dance whose steps were taught by Jesus. Your living presence is our strength and peacefulness. You are the search for life which makes us restless and the truth of life that allows us to be still. To you belongs the delights of our hearts, for you are the pleasure of Christ among us. Amen. We confess the things of our lives that we have said and thought and done, which has neglected, betrayed and discarded the truth of your grace and your gospel. Forgive us. Forgive us for placing our own comfort above the needs of others. Forgive us when tiredness dictates our action. May we know the grace, the love and the peace of Christ, who forgives, restores and journeys with us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we sing together the Lord's Prayer. We hear our first reading. This is from the Gospel of John, read to us by Sarah Wardle. John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. 
John chapter 3 verses 1 to 17. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they were born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who comes from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. For God so loved the world, the sparrows, the mountain lions, the fish and the people. For God so loved the world in success and failure, in sickness and health, in mediocrity and extraordinary. For God so loved the world enough to become one of us, enough to suffer along with us, enough to offer new life to us. For God so loved the world, let us worship God. And so we listen and sing along to the hymn, the song, Let Your Living Water Flow. flow over my soul let your holy spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind all my cares and burdens onto you i roll jesus jesus Father, Father, Spirit, 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 come now Holy Spirit and take control, hold me your loving arms and make me whole 
Wipe away all doubt and fear and take my pride. Draw me to your love and keep me by your side. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sing to the Father. Father. Jesus, let him fill your soul. Let him take you in his arms and make you whole. As you give your life to him, he'll set you free. You will live and reign with him eternally. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, sing to the Father, 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 sing to the Spirit, 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 Spirit. Your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens onto you I roll. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Father, 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 Spirit, Spirit. was the song Let Your Living Water Flow. And so now we hear our second reading from the book of Romans, the letter of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17, read for us by Sarah Wardle. Sarah, thank you for reading for us today. Romans 8, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. 
Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Three words. And it's amazing how over the past year these three word slogans have taken prominence in our daily lives. I wonder if you can remember way back a year ago what that first three word slogan was from the government in relation to COVID-19. Can you remember? Stay home, protect the NHS and save lives. Then that changed over some time to stay alert, control the virus, save lives. And then it moved on again to wash hands, cover face, make space, hands, face and space. And then the three words deviated to a phrase, eat out, to help out. And then we came back to hands and face and space. And now we've changed again, no longer a three word slogan or three phrase slogan, but to a fourfold slogan, hands, face, space, fresh air. Of course, all of these refer to restrictions that we've all encountered over the past year. And we pray for all those who are struggling in, in areas where it seems that restrictions are becoming even, uh, even tighter. But I wonder if we were to attach three slogans or three words to our church or our communities, what they would be. Play, pray, heal. Play, play, real reality, intent and need. Pray, heal, feel. We could, in fact, create our own three words. Father, Son and Spirit. Our calling as a people of faith is to reveal the love of God to all people. And part of that is about how we welcome and treat people as they encounter and engage with us as people of faith and of our church communities. I've seen many of the signs on churches doors and walls that say all are welcome. And I'd like to add to that a phrase of come as you are, or three words, as you are. But if we're to come as we are into worship, maybe we have a phrase on the door as we leave, but leave changed. We come as we are, yet engaging with a living, loving God through the power of the Spirit, we are changed. And isn't come as you are the gospel message? Isn't that what Jesus preached? Come as you are. On this Trinity Sunday, we profess our belief in God who has revealed himself, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And this revelation of God for us is an extraordinary loving invitation to share with all his children his own life. The insights into this mystery of the Trinity are not grasped by our intelligence or lack of it, but rather because Jesus made it possible for us to do so. He's revealed to us the mystery of the Trinity, not as a puzzle to be solved, but rather as an encounter to be experienced, an invitation to lovingly respond to a God who revealed himself to Moses as a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And we find that in Exodus 34 verse 6. All the activity of God directed towards us is in order that we might share in his life abundantly, that we might come to know and love he who is our maker, our lover and our keeper. One of the breakthroughs in our relationship with other people, whether it be our spouses and partners, our children, colleagues and friends, is when we feel comfortable exposing our vulnerability, confiding in others something about our true selves, as some may say, letting our defences down. It, it can be a salutary experience because it involves trust in another in whom we are confident will accept our self-disclosure with love and understanding. And we know what it is when that doesn't work, when that trust is broken. At the heart of the incarnation of God becoming human is the self-disclosure of one 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself. At the heart of the life of the Trinity is this eternal exchange of love, this self-emptying, and of all of it, all of this, for us, for our sake. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. That's in verse 16 of our reading from John 3 today. So let's look just for a short time at this gospel reading. Nicodemus, we've got the context of this meeting with Nicodemus. He's no ordinary citizen. He's a religious Pharisee, a leader of the Jews, the Sanhedrin, a man who has committed his life to studying and obeying the law. But somehow, in all of his teachings, in all of his religion, he'd missed the message. He comes to Jesus by night. He comes in the dark. Why? We're not sure why he chose to come at night. We can only really speculate. Perhaps the night symbolises the darkness that surrounds his heart and soul. The night was as safe as was the afternoon for the woman at the well, journeying in the heat of the day, or as damning as it is for Judas in that dark night garden. Night times can hide and can harbour. And Nicodemus seems intrigued. He's intrigued about this person, Jesus, but also a little hesitant and afraid. Where will this path and this encounter lead? What will others say if they see me? Perhaps that might explain the night time. He's made a choice to come, but he's anxious. This choice may get him into trouble. And now, having set the context, the dialogue begins. And through that dialogue is challenge. Nicodemus begins by showing respect, trying to establish a relationship of trust. They are, after all, both religious teachers. And here is this drawing into dialogue. And of course, in this, Nicodemus is like many of us who are drawn to Jesus. Fascinated but unsure, pulled, yet pulling back, wanting to encounter and yet anxious of others' opinions and what this journey is going to entail. And it's in this human interaction that Jesus confronts Nicodemus and us. Very truly, I tell you, Amen, Amen, I say to you, the words that come after the Amen will have special importance and significance. Amen, Amen, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. Jesus cuts to the chase. He cuts through the respectful interaction with a massive challenge. And there's even confusion, even in the very interpretation of the words born again, or is it born from above? What is it that Jesus requires of us? What is this transformation of which he speaks? Nicodemus, I can just imagine, either looks to the sky or looks to his feet. Jesus challenges Nicodemus. And Nicodemus, as so often happens in John's Gospel, understands the words purely in human physical terms. How can anyone, he asks, be born after growing old? Can anyone enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Nic Nicodemus is trapped by the literal. But Nicodemus is challenged to move beyond his context. Look at the wind where it chooses it blows where it chooses. You hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's taking you. 
And Nicodemus is being challenged to look up and out, to see a world where the uh, the above has broken into the below, where God's stage and our stage are impacting upon one another. The birth of a new earth. It's not a matter of just a time and place. This relationship is for all time and for every place. It's a whole way of being. Nicodemus is being challenged to see eternity now. And friends, so are we. Jesus helps Nicodemus and us to see something timeless, not just the now, but the future, the now, the not yet, eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world may be saved through him. That's it. That's the gospel in one sentence. The sentence, sentences we learned in Sunday school, though it would take all our lives even to begin to possibly understand it. Because that's what it means to live in the midst of the Trinity. You see, the Trinity is not a formula, it's an action. The action of God in our lives, in our world and throughout all time. The action which leads us to engage with others in the work of kingdom values that we might reveal the king of the kingdom in all his fullness to other people. For us to look at community and church and to look beyond, to glimpse a beauty and a truth beyond when our lives, our community, our vision becomes the very expression of God. Come as you are, Nicodemus, woman at the well, to each of us, but leave changed. Jesus, in the conversation with Nicodemus, seeks to highlight the difference of a relationship that Christ and with Christ can have when we meet grace face to face then we are changed. It's all about the grace of God. Grace goes beyond our comprehension. By our human nature, we want to merit God's favour. We want to be the ones, we want to be the ones that gets us into heaven. Yet the grace of God makes us, the grace of God makes us a new creation. You know, you couldn't have more morals than Nicodemus. If anyone deserved eternal life, it would appear that Nicodemus had all the right qualifications. He seems worthy of eternal life. But the scripture reminds us that salvation is not about human effort or merit. Position does not save us. Popularity does not save us. Prestige and piety does not save us. It isn't about human efforts. It's about a personal relationship which is being born from above New birth is not something we do. It's something that God does through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a miraculous thing. It's an intervention from God. It's God who causes a new creation, a new covenant, a new life and a new birth. Friends, there's nothing that we can do to earn God's love. John Wesley would ask the question, how is it with your soul? And that's the real question that we need to answer this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you are viewing this act of worship. How is it with your soul? Come as you are, but leave changed, will you? Being born again is not about religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's the best thing about living in a relationship with Jesus is having that personal relationship with him. May God bless you. Amen. As we reflect upon our own relationship with God, we listen and we sing the song, Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Spirit, we love you.
Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify your name in all the earth. We love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify your name in all the earth. and adore you glorify your name in all the earth glorify your name glorify your name glorify your name in all the earth glorify your name Our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Loving God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us whole hearts, Lord, so that we may meet other people and recognise your life in them. Make us wholehearted Christians that respond to the needs of others as you respond to us. For our communities and our world, we pray for reconciliation and peace. For the Middle East, for Syria, may your kingdom come through aid, support, refuge and care. Loving God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us your vision, Lord, in everything we think and do. Sharpen our minds so that we see to the heart of things. Help us to understand what you want us to do. Help us to choose your way of life rather than ours. Loving God, Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let us hold fast to our faith, Lord. Draw us to your heart. Teach us to love one another. Make us strong in you. We pray for all who are unwell and desperate for well-being and wholeness. May they know the presence of your Spirit. Loving God, fill us with your Spirit. We pray for those in trouble for the wrongly accused, for the exploited, for people who are treated as less than human. Speak in the hearts of those who cause harm to others. Restore your creation. Comforting God, we pray for all victims of abuse, seeking your comfort and the assurance of your presence, that your presence may be light and hope, strength and peace. Guide us and give wisdom that we may journey together seeking your purpose, that in faith we may resolve to seek justice for all. We pray for people who have no centre to their lives, the rootless and homeless, the lost people. Bring them home. Loving God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. We are part of your community of love, we pray for ourselves and our brothers and sisters in Christ, for the whole communion of saints, those who live with you in your marvellous light, 
for the church throughout the world and for those who are to come. Loving God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, before we sing or listen to our final hymn, O Thou Who Camest, a blessing. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, may we be united in purpose and in mission to surrender, to serve, to follow. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning, this afternoon or this evening in our act of worship. O thou who camest from above. Sad. 